Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the sizes on a Royal Merlin 4 drink vending machine. At some point of operating your machine, you may have to go from a bottle to a can or a can to a bottle and everything in between. And to make those changes on a Royal Merlin 4 drink vending machine is actually not a very difficult process. Matter of fact, one of the advantages of the Royal Merlin 4 drink machine is that it doesn't require any additional shims or rods to be placed inside the machine or removed and any physical retiming of the vent motors to make these changes. We simply make some, a few adjustments on the columns and then we actually make some programming changes on the computer board. After that, it's all that needs to be done. So I'm gonna show you how to do each of those steps. So let's get started. Now I'm going to be using this Royal 650 live front in this tutorial, but this will also work for a drink machine that has a round front and your buttons are down the right hand side. Now a 650 is 10 selections, which actually gives us 12 columns on the inside of the machine. So let's start with making those physical adjustments for the columns. So on this machine, on this tutorial actually, I am going to be adjusting columns 1 and column 2, or selection 1 and selection 2, for a 16.9 ounce bottle for selection one and a 12 ounce can for selection two. Now, selection one is on this Royal 650 has two columns, as a matter of fact. It's got a front and a rear column, so there's two settings I need to make for this. Same thing goes for selection number two. I'm using a front and back column. So on the front set of columns, we actually have these spacers that we can adjust back or forward. And there's actually little notches with numbers or notches that you would count setting-wise to where you would place those depending on the product you're vending. Now, on most Royal Merlin Ford drink machines, there'll be a diagram on the inside of the machine that gives you the typical settings that you would use for different product sizes. Because I like for you to understand the reasoning why we make these adjustments, why, and this is not an exact science. You may have a product that doesn't fit within the, this chart, so what do you do if you don't know what these numbers are? Well, if you understand the concept of why we make these adjustments, then you won't need that chart. You'll just know, okay, I need to adjust this because of this. So let's get started with that. Now, on the front set of columns, there are two spacers or, or adjustment brackets or rods or whatever you want to call these that be adjusted back and forward depending on the type of product we're vending. So I've actually removed these out of this machine. Well, you won't have to remove these to make these adjustments, but I want to take them out for this example so you can see what they are. They're just pieces of metal that we adjust back and forth and they got little hooks at the top at the bottom here that hook into the side walls of the column. So what we're attempting to do the way the Royal Merlin Ford drink machine was designed is that we want all of our products brought to the center beam of the machine. So imagine there is a beam running down the center of the machine and all the products have to go to the beam. If it's in the front, it needs to go back to the beam. If its products are in the rear, they need to go forward to the beam. So this is to keep those products up against the center point of the machine and also to prevent the products from falling out of the column as they shift. Now, as the products are being vended, they're dropping down. That drop down is going to cause a product maybe to move forward. And the last thing we want is when you open the door, we all have these products toppling out on top of you. So you have these spacers to adjust that. Now for bottles on the spacer, what we're trying to achieve here is to prevent the bottle from falling out. So we usually typically like to put the side spacers into the neck of the bottle. So it sits in between the cap and the body of the bottle right in the neck, and this was to stop it. And here's from a different angle, is to stop that product from falling out. Now, if you have a sport drink that doesn't have a neck, now this has got a teeny little neck, this bottle does, but if you have a sport drink, you can also make this adjustment spacer so that the cap is not that. And this would prevent it from falling out. So we, if we can't get it into the neck of the bottle like this, we can also go just to the cap. And so we adjust it so the cap is at this point here and here. All right, so to make the adjustments for the 16.9 bottle, and let me go over this over here. 
I'm gonna grab a bottle. I'm going to adjust these spacers. Now, there are, down the walls here, there are actually notches, and there's actually a counting uh, hole or a, um, an index hole. That's always three back. So if you know where your first index hole is, you know that's three back, next index hole is six, so anything between there is gonna be four and five. So to adjust the spacers, you just lift up and you just move them back to lock them in. So I'm gonna go back to setting seven. So there's that, and I'll come over to the right side here, put my setting in here and go to setting seven. For time's sake here, put the bottom in, find the bottom one goes in easier. There we are. Now if I was to put my bottle in here, there we are, that should fit right there in the cap. Perfect. Now I need to make the adjustment of the back spacer. Now the back spacer is a long piece of metal and it looks like this. Now I've removed this from the machine. You will not need to remove this machine to make the adjustments, but what this does is it basically, we're gonna adjust this back or forward to keep the product towards the center of the machine and that all depends on the length of the product. To make the adjustments, there's actually these little things that lock into the things. I call these little hooks or tabs or pins per se that lock into the notches that are on the side walls. As a matter of fact, this is what it looks like on the back side, how they're just spring loaded. So you could basically take your finger and twist. We would just squeeze those, move it back or move it forward, lock them into the holes that need to be. The way I've always done this is I've always would walk the back first and then move the back, the top to the front, then back, just basically walk it back and forward like this type process. Now, when we're adjusting these, if we don't know the number, what we're looking to do again is to keep the product towards the center of the machine. So, you remember in the other video I have about how to load a drink bending machine or Royal Merlin Ford drink bending machine, when the products are loading in the rear for a bottle, the caps face the rear. Now, we don't want to place the spacer all the way up against the bottle. I've always found it better if we take an index finger's depth. So I'm going to put my index finger over the cap of the bottle and then if I was to adjust this, that's about how much gap I would want. Let's say a quarter of an inch. Perfect, so we want a little bit of play because we don't want to restrict the bottles descending into the cradle because the motor runs at a constant rate, so we don't want to restrict that. So leaving just a little bit of a gap, a little bit of play, allows our bottles to travel properly into the cradle. So again, I've always used my index finger. It's kind of a measuring tool because it's hard to get a tape measure back there. So if I knew that's, that's perfectly enough. So if I get it in there and I can use the bottle back and forth, I can get my index finger between the cap of the bottle and the back spacer. I know I've got a good setting. So I'm gonna come forward a little bit on the bottom and I'm gonna to come to the top and move that forward a little bit. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm going to squeeze those and find the little notches. I'm gonna move this forward, get that locked in place, come up to the top side here, make that adjustment. They look like they're spring loaded so they kind of lock into place. Now I'm gonna test my gap. I'm gonna put the bottle in there. Good, I got a good play. I'm gonna test it all the way up, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I've got the rear, or I got both side columns set up for my 16.9 ounce bottle. Now I need to move over to my 12 ounce can. Now 12 ounce cans load too deep. We are putting two cans in there. So when I load this, I'm gonna be loading it too deep where the bottles are just one deep. So the great thing about 12 ounce cans on a Merlin 4 machine, these settings are super easy to remember. Front columns, those spacers come all the way forward. Rear columns, that backspacer goes all the way to the rear. Nothing simpler than that when it comes to uh, making these adjustments. So I'm gonna do that on number two, both the front and the back. So on the front side, I'm just gonna come all the way to the front. So I'm just gonna lift up the spacer, move it forward, lock the, that side in, go over to the other side. That's locked in. Now I'm gonna reach back and adjust that backspacer, but I'm gonna reach in, squeeze the bottom, move this all the way to the back, Go to the top side here, lock that in, back's locked in, there we are. So, selection number two is now set for columns, the front and rear column for this machine. And the next thing we need to do is to actually make the programming changes. Now, there's a setting on this machine called SDEP, and that's called set depth. We are setting the depth telling the computer board 
the depth of each of these individual columns. And what we're actually adjusting is the timing or shutoff timing of when the products drop on this delivery chute. Now on a Merlin 4 drink vending machine, there is a drop sensor on the chute so that when the products drop onto that chute, at that point, the computer board knows our product's been vended and it needs to tell the motor to stop. Now, when we vend 12 ounce cans because it's too deep, we need that motor to stop instantaneously. As soon as the product drops on that chute, that motor needs to stop, okay? Because there's a 15 second window, that's not an exact number, but let's say there is a 15 second window so that when that motor starts rotating, a timer starts on the control board and something has to drop on that chute within that 15 second window. If nothing drops on that chute within that 15 second window, it will mark that selection as sold out and give the customer the money back or make another selection. So by adjusting our set depth numbers, we're, we're changing how how quickly that motor stops. Since we're loading too deep on a 12 ounce can, that motor needs to stop instantaneously because if we allow it to coast a little bit after the product is dropped, the next product would drop in behind it and we would get a double vent. Now on bottles, we only have one, so it doesn't matter. We can allow the motor to coast, but because the motor has to rotate longer to come back around to grab the next bottle, it may not get there within that 15 second window. So we want the motor to continue to coast a little bit after the product has been vended, and that's why we set it to set depth of one. So to make those adjustments, it requires us to go into the programming on the computer board. Now that can, computer board on a Merlin 4 drink machine can be found on the inside of the main door on the left hand side here. On this particular Roll 650, that board is located in the upper left-hand corner. Now, your board may be located in the center of the door, or the board may be located recessed in on the upper left-hand corner. But what we're looking for is the service mode button, and that is a blue circular button. It's about the size of a pencil eraser. And on this board, it happens to be located right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that service mode button. You'll feel it collapse underneath my finger, and then we'll make sure we have cash shown on the display. So I press that mode button one time. Now I'm going to come around to the front of the machine. Now here, I don't want to close the door all the way because if I close the door on the machine, it's going to put it back into sales mode and out of service mode. So I want to keep the door slightly ajar and I'm presented with cash on the display here. Now I'm going to need to navigate to SDEP in the menu and to navigate that, we're going to be using selections buttons one, two, and three. So selection button one will act as a up arrow on a computer keyboard, selection button two will act as a down arrow on a computer board, and selection button three will act as an enter or delete key on a computer keyboard. So we're going to advance forward until we find SDEP. So I'll be using button one or I could use button two, but I'll use button one here. So I'm going to keep selection button one until I find SDEP on the display. And there we are, set depth, SDEP. So here in this menu is where I can make my adjustments. So I'm going to tap the number three selection button to enter SDEP. So I press the button one time, the screen will blink and I'm presented with all ALL. -L. Now, if I had this machine completely filled with 12 ounce cans, I wouldn't have to go to each individual selection to set those depth settings. I can do it all at once under all but I'm only concerned with just selections buttons one and two in, in this particular tutorial. So I need to advance forward from all until I find selection one. And there we are, press the button one one time to advance forward and I'm presented with S1 and we have a two. So we have S1 which is selection one and then the number after that is either gonna be a one or a two. That's letting us know what the depth setting is. Two is for two products deep, one is for one products deep. Now we know that when we loaded our 16 point ounce bottles into for column one in the front and back columns, we're only loading it one product deep per column. So I need to set that two to a one. So to enter that, I need to press selection button three one time, and the two begins to blink. This lets me know that I'm in edit mode. So I can press selection button one one time, and I'm going to get a blinking one. We're only going to either have a one or a two on a Merlin 4 control board. So again, if I press selection button one again, it goes to a two. If I press button one again, it goes to a one. Same thing with button two, is this gonna go in reverse. So one is what I want, so I have S1 with a blinking one means I'm set my depth for one. 
and I'm going to save that. And to do that, I'm just going to tap the number three selection button one time, and that's blinking one is going to stop. It's going to become solid. Press the selection button three one time, and there I have a solid one. So S1 one is set for selection one, one, we're good there. Now we're going to move on to selection two. So I'm going to move forward by using selection button one. Press that one time. I'm preventing with S2. Actually, this needs to be a two because we're loading the cans too deep per column. Again, press selection button three to enter. And now I'm in edit mode because we have a blinking number, which is a one. I need to change that to a two. So I press selection button one one time and I've got a blinking two. And now I need to save that or lock that in. So I'm going to tap in the selection button three one time. And now I got a solid number and these two selections are programmed. Now to exit, all I have to do here is to close the door if I wanted to, or I can press and hold selection button three until the screen blinks or a quick count of three. So I press and hold selection button three and I've got SDEP on the display. So I've now exited and I'm at the top level of SDEP. And here I can continue to press and hold the number three selection button until I get ice cold on the display. So press selection button three and we have ice cold. Now I'm exited out and I'm ready to go. I can go back and fill up the machine for drinks or if that's already done, I can close the door and be on my way. Now, if you found this video useful, I really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments or any ideas of videos that you would like to see in the future, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.